Another day of grace, another day of mercy, another day of favor, God. God, we come to lift up the name of Jesus, God. God, we come tonight, God, to reverence you, God. God, we come tonight, God, to let you know, God, that we're not going to give up, God. No matter what we have to go through, God, we're not going to give up, God. God, by any means necessary, God, we're going to do what you called us to do, God. Father, we thank you, God. It's because of you, God. It's because of your grace, God. It has brought us this far, God. The old people, you say, we've come this far by grace. God, we thank you for your grace, God. God, we couldn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. And we can never repay it, God. But God, we thank you for your grace that saved us, God. We didn't even know that we were sinking, God. But when you showed up, God, and you showed us your love, God. When you reached down, God, and you grabbed us out of whatever we were in, God, and you pulled us out, God. There was grace that pulled us out, God. Father, we thank you for your mercy that keeps us, God. Your words that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God, every day, God, we fall, God. But God, it's your mercy, God, that keeps us right now, God. It's not us, God. It's your mercy that keeps us, God. So Father, we just come today, God, to sit in your presence, God, and hear and see what you're going to do in our lives, God, that we've been seeing so many signs and wonders and miracles, God. We've been hearing, God, testimonies of your goodness, God, and all that you've done for your people, God. So tonight, God, we just want to come to let you know, God, that we appreciate you, God. Oh, God, it ain't just because of what you've done, God. It's because of who you are, God. If you don't do anything else, God, you've done more than enough, God. You've done more than we could do for ourselves, God. While we were yet sinners, God, you died for us, God. You died for us, God. You were a ransom, and you were a ransom for many, God. So, Father, we just thank you tonight, God, that as we sit in your presence, God, reveal your glory to us, God. Let us hear a word, God. Let us see a vision, God. Let us do what you've called us to do, God, and that's to obey you, God. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the honor. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 We welcome everybody tonight. Amen. Uh, to True Love Delivers, our midweek boost Bible study. Amen. Amen. How many of us know it's nothing like being boosted? Amen. Especially in the middle of the week. Amen. Oh, God. This world will beat you down. Amen. But when you get into the presence of God, you start feeling that glory. You start getting that energy. You start getting energized, amen. Then you think back on what you went through, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have as bad as you thought it was, amen. That's called the grace of God, amen. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Tonight, we're going we're gonna to look, I'm gonna give, I would like to give you a, a scripture to stand on. So tonight, we're going to look at our scripture we're going to be standing on. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 16 through 31. But our opening scripture is going to be this, Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. And I'm going to read this translation here, but I'm going to, I'm going to do the study out of our Bible study tonight out of uh, the New Living Translation. But I just want to read this and let this go into your hearing, amen. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. A lot of times we like to stop right there, don't we? Because, oh, that's enough right there. That's enough right there. But we, we need to go on sometimes. Amen. So but the Bible says that but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. And let me stop again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. A lot of times when we read this scripture, we have to understand that what we're reading, it's not just our read, but it's who we're talking about. 
who we are declaring and decreeing these things to. Amen. So when I read this, think about we, we talk about our Lord and Savior. We talk about a God that can do anything but fail. A God that brought you out of where you were to where you are now. Amen. But he's not going to leave you where you are now. He's going to take you higher and deeper. Amen. So we're going to read this again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God, we, now he's talking about us, for the one that comes to God must believe that he is. Okay, so when we come to God, we got to believe that he is. He is what? He is whatever you need him to be. You got sickness in your body, he is a healer. Amen? Mm. You got problems in your home, he is a rectifier. Amen? He's a counselor, amen. Whatever you need him to be, he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, we, we got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta remember that word, a rewarder, amen. So he lets you know that if you follow me and you listen to me and you do what I tell you to do, there's a reward that's going to come out of that, amen. So a lot of times we, we don't understand that it ain't just coming to church. It ain't just reading this word. It's more to it than that. We got to understand that when we get into the presence of God, when we read his word, when we obey his commandments, amen, we get rewarded. Amen. The greatest reward we're going to have is we're going to have eternal home in heaven. Amen. So this stuff down here is temporary. So we got to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently, those that really seek him, that really want him, that really want to know about him. Not the one that's a casual relationship. We, 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 want, we want an intimate relationship, don't we? Because we want to know all about him, amen. We want to know the ins and the outs, amen. Just like us, when we came to him, we threw up our hands to God, take all of this. He knew what he was getting. So we need to know what we're getting, don't we? Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. So that's our scripture for tonight. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he, which is us, who comes to God, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. So that's our opening scripture for tonight. Amen. But we're going to look into this book of uh, Matthew. Matthew, the uh, 19th chapter, verse 16 through 31. And, and it, it kind of corresponds right next door with Mark 10, 17 through 31. Amen. But we're going to be in Matthew 19, 16 through 31. And it kind of runs parallel. It's kind of like a, uh, it's the same story. But there's some words that are different that I may refer to in the book of Mark that's not in the book of Matthew. Amen. And it'll be Mark 10, 17 through 31. Same story, just a few little different uh, things that are in there that I, I, I want to bring out to you uh, to your ears and to your hearing, amen. And tonight we're going to talk about this. What does my faith look like? What does my faith look like? We ever think about that? What does your faith look like? Can your faith move a mountain? Can your faith uh, uh, heal? Can your faith deliver? Can your faith set free? I'm here tonight to tell you, yes, yes, your faith should. Amen. He just said without faith, it's impossible to please him. So everything that you think you can do, you can do. Amen. But you got to do it with faith. Amen. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. We're not going to we, we not going to please our father going halfway. Amen. We got to be all in with this. Amen. We got to be all in with it. If nobody else go. Here I am, Lord, send me. Amen. Everybody's not going to go, amen. But you got to be the one to go, amen. When you go, make sure you go in faith, amen. So in, in Matthew 19, chapter, verse 16 through 31, I'm going to read that. And we're going we're gonna to look at some things. We're going to discuss some stuff. And we're going to see what God is speaking to us today about our faith, amen. It says, one day some parents brought, no, let me back up. I'm not going to get there. 16. Someone came to Jesus with a question. Teacher. What good, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Jesus replied, he said, why ask me what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Mm. He says, which one? The man asked. He said, which commandments should I keep? And Jesus replied, you must not murder. 
You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. He says, honor your father and your mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, and, and this, was the, this was the young rich man said. He said, I have obeyed all these commandments. The young man replied, what else must I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. Mm. And he said, you will have a treasure in heaven. He said, then come follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad for he had many possessions. Verse 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. You know, it's very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astonished. Then who in the world can be saved? Mm. This is what they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Verse 27, then Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? My God. Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, you who have been my followers will also sit on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or property for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit, will inherit eternal life. Mm. But many who are the greatest now will be least important. And then those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. Father, we thank you tonight, God. Speak a word, God. God, speak to us, God. Increase our faith, God. Lord, you say we've all been given a measure of faith, God. So, God, right now, God, I believe that when my faith, God, meets her faith and her faith touches his faith, God, and his faith touches her faith, God, that we have come together, God, and there's nothing, God, that we can't do, God. God, our faith level is increased, God. God, you tell us to fail not to assemble, God. So, God, we come together, God, not for ourselves, God, but we come for each other right now, God. And when we come, God, we bring everything to the table, God. We bring everything to the table, God, because you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, God. So, God, when we come to the table, God, we bring everything. Why? Because there's a need in the body, God. And you will supply all of our needs, God according to your riches and glory, God. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all of the honor. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is a, this is a, a real powerful story. We've heard it so many times. Amen. we heard it so many times. A lot of times we just think it's about a rich person and, and uh, they're having a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus tells them this and they walk away sad. Amen. But if you really dig deep down into the into the story or to this parable that Jesus is, is really talking to them about, amen, there's some there's some good stuff in here, amen. There's some really good stuff in here. Uh, the first thing we, we want to take a look at this. Uh, the rich the rich man, he came to Jesus and he had a question. And in Mark and Matthew, he he says, teacher, but in in, in uh and Mark, he calls them good teachers. That's why he says, why callest thou me good? In other words, why, why do you think I'm so good? Hmm. You ever think about that? Why do we think God is so good? Why do you think God is so good? Why do you think God is so good? Well, he said, well, because he, he gave me life. He gave me health. He gave me strength. Amen. He does all this stuff. Amen. But the Bible says, this is what Jesus said. He said, apart from my father, I can do nothing. Even though he is great, amen, you know, and he say, I thought, he say, I thought it not robbery to be equal with my father, amen. So 
I, I thank God that God humbled himself, even though he was majesty, even though he was royalty, amen, even though he was the son of the most high God, he humbled himself. He said, why are you calling me good? Because it ain't about me. Even though I came down here and gave my life for you, he said, I'm not the one that's good. He said, there's but one that's good, and that is God. So that, that's, the, that's the first thing we have to understand. When we come to God, amen, or we come to Jesus, amen, they are, they are all the same. It's, it's a triune. It's the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. They're all the same, amen. But Jesus, he always lets us know that no matter who calls him good, he lets you know right back. He said, like, yeah, I know, I, I know who I am. He said, but you got to understand this. There's someone greater than me. There's someone greater than me. And, he, and he's going he's gonna to reveal that in, in, in this lesson today. So he says that this, this young rich ruler comes to Jesus with a question, amen. And, and I thought, I said, well, at least he, didn't, he, he wasn't like Nicodemus. He didn't wait till at night and sneak around. Or he didn't wait till he thought everybody was asleep. Then he sneak in Jesus' room and tap him on the show. Hey, hey, Jesus, check this out. I got a question for you. The Bible said he came, amen, and he was in the middle of everybody. He wasn't, he wasn't ashamed, amen. Why? We can't be ashamed when we lack knowledge. When we need a word from God, we can't wait till we get into our closet. We can't wait till we get the pastor by himself, amen. Sometimes you got to do whatever you need to do to get a word from God, amen. Sometimes a word from God may come through, it may come through your praise. It may come through your worship. It may come through your prayer time, amen. It may just come through your everyday life. But you got to do whatever you need to do, amen, to get a word from God. And this is what, you know, I give this, this, this rich man, I, I give him that much credit, amen, that he was not ashamed to go before Jesus and let Jesus know, hey, Jesus, I don't know about this. I, I, I just, I don't understand, amen. See, the Bible says that we perish for the lack of knowledge, amen. So a lot of times we just, if we, if, we, if we can't get an understanding to it, what do we say? Well, maybe it wasn't meant for me to know. But, but that's not true. That's, that, that's not true. God wants us to, to know all about him. He wants us to know all about ourselves. How many of us know we don't fully know ourselves? We, 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 we limit ourselves, amen. But when, when you read the Bible, it says Jesus gave power and authority to his disciples, he gave them power and authority to his disciples. And I know the script says to cast out demons and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. But how many of us know you ain't got to walk around just throwing out demons or casting out demons and healing bodies? God gave you power and authority to move to do more than just that. You know how powerful it is to speak a word of life into somebody's life? Somebody that's going through? When God gives you power and authority, he gives you the, the ability and the power that comes from him through you to go into somebody else, amen. And it'll move their situation and their circumstance, amen. So we, we, we got to quit limiting ourselves. But this, this rich ruler, he came and he, he was lacking knowledge and he, and he wanted to get some knowledge. And, you know, what better way to get some knowledge than to go to someone who knows all? Mm. Your pastor don't know all? Your ministers don't know all. The apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the, the, the ministers, they don't know it all, amen. But if you get into this word, amen, everything you need to know is right here in this word, amen. So he comes to Jesus and, and he, he asked this question. Uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, what's the question he asked? What good deed must I do to have eternal life? Okay, you, you, listen to the words he said. What good deed must I do to have? Have means to gain eternal life. See, he was ignorant to the fact of what the scripture was saying. He was thinking that everything he got because he was rich. Everything he got he got because of what he had. Mm. What must I do? What, what, what must I do? What must I do? See, when, whenever we come to God, he that comes to God must believe that he is, or he is a reward of them that diligently. We got to believe that we are, we are little in his eyesight. Amen. 
but he builds us up when, when, we, get in, when, we, get in, when we get in his presence. When we come to God, we got we to gotta let him know, God, I, I, I'm so minute, God. I come to you, God, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so small, God, but I come to you, God, and reverence you, God, and God will start to speak to you, amen. How many of you know God can't speak to flesh? But see, he came to Jesus in his flesh. Hey, uh, Jesus, what must I do? What deed must I do? What do I need to buy? Who do I need to pay off? Who, house, who do I need to buy a house? To gain eternal life. Ooh, flip over to flip, flip over to Mark. Flip over to Mark in that uh, uh, around the seventeenth chapter. He said, "I mean, seventeenth verse." He said, "What must I do to inherit eternal life?" See, now he's talking about inherit. How do you inherit something? You got to be. Oh, we going from uh, uh, Matthew nineteen sixteen through thirty one, and, and we may skip back and forth to Mark 10, 17 through 31. And it's just for the words, amen. It's the same story, but it's just the words in here. Okay. So here in, 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 in Matthew, he said to what? Receive eternal life. But over here in Mark, he says to inherit eternal life. And, and it's just, it's a difference in word. Okay, receive means for somebody to give it to you. To inherit means that you're entitled to it. See, a lot of times we like to receive stuff. See, we can receive stuff. It may be free. It may just be a, a gimme. But when you inherit something, that means there's an association with the inheritor to the one that's going to inherit from him. Amen. So that, that's why I said that there's a difference. When, when you look at Matthew, Matthew says, he kind of says it this way. He says receive, but, but, but Mark breaks it down. He says inherit. I like to inherit better because I can receive anything. Mr. Friend friend can, 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 can bless me and, and give, me, give me something, whatever it is. Amen. And, and I'm going to be appreciative of it. Amen. But because she did it from her heart. But when I inherit it, that means somebody thought enough about me to put me in their will because they knew one day that I was going to need it. And that's what God did. God, we are heirs and joint heirs. We are heirs with God and joint heirs with Christ. So we got a double blessing, amen? So we have inherited that. Uh, Y'all see that? <laughs> there ain't nobody just gave it to you, amen? Because if they give it to you, they can take it away from you. Let somebody give you something and you don't say thank you. They'll take it right back for you. But when you inherited something, that means they thought enough about you to say, you know what? They were on my mind. Let me write them in there. Let me write him in there. So back to Matthew, he, he, he asked this question. He said, uh, he said uh, what, must, what must I do? What, 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 what must I do uh, to receive eternal life? What must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus automatically told him. He said, first thing you need to do, you need to keep my commandments. He, Jesus will, will give us easy. Amen. He'll bring stuff back to our remembrance, the easy stuff. It's easy to keep his commandments, ain't it? Ain't it? Is it? It's okay to say yes or no. It's easy to keep his commandments, but we just don't do them, right? It's easy, it's easy to say I love you, but we just don't do it. It's easy to say I support you, but we just don't do it. So Jesus, he started off easy with the young man. He didn't, he didn't get all on him. You know, he didn't, he, he, he didn't just bombard him. He said, well, first of all, the thing you need to do is, he said, you need to keep the commandments. And, and first thing he said, he said, which ones? <laughs> See how it is? When, when God get ready to bless us, my, I remember there, I remember my dad used to tell this story about this, this man was riding this donkey and he was just flying. He was just going. He said, whoa, whoa. He pulling back on the reins and he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. Then finally, he said, whoa. He got to the edge of the cliff and he, the, the donkey stopped and the man flipped over and he started falling. He said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And all of a sudden, a branch caught him by, 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 his, uh, by his shirt. Then he said, Lord, I don't need you now. I don't need you no more, Lord. This branch that caught me. Then the branch broke. 
So we, we have to understand that, that everything that we receive from God, that, you know, it's, it, it seems like it's hard for us to do, but we just got to have a mind to do it. Amen. It, 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 everything is it, it, in our mind. And he says, he said, every one of the commandments, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery. He said, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely. He said, honor your father, your mother, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, and th this is the thing, we always got a, a, a comeback. We always got to come back. When, when, when God says something else, we always got to come back. He said, bless those that despitefully use you. But God, they did it to me first. That's not what, that's not what he's telling you. He's telling you, I'm commanding you to love. He said, that's one of the greatest commandments. He said, that's how people going to know you are my disciples, the love you have one for another. We can't pick and choose who we want to love, amen. He said, you got to love everybody. He says, he said, all of these, you got to follow all these. He said, I've obeyed all these commandments. So now, so now he's trying to puff himself up. Can you imagine somebody standing in front of, of somebody and say, I've done all of these. Look at me. I have done all of these. How long has he done them? He said, I've done them all of my life. He said, I've been doing this all of my life. Think about that. He's telling Jesus, Jesus, I've been helping people all my life. I've been giving to the poor all of my life. I've been blessing people all of my life. I've been kind to people. I took care of my mother. I took care of my father. I built this for the church. I did this for the city. I did all of this stuff. He said, I did all of that since I was born. But how many of us know you did that stuff because of your ability? Because you were able to. You did those things. Those are called deeds. Anybody can do a deed. Anybody can do a good deed. Amen. You know, what, what the Bible's talking about? Uh, he said, you who give good gifts, you can give your, you, you know, your children ask for this, you give them a snake. But we know how to give good gifts, don't we? But we do what we choose to do. Amen. But he told Jesus, Jesus, I done did all this my whole life. But then Jesus turns the table on him. Amen. Jesus said, he said, if you want to be perfect, Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Amen. So now Jesus has let the man know right now. He said everything that you've been saving up for, everything you've been buying, everything you've been blessing people with has no significance when it comes to the glory of God or when it comes to your eternal home. You know, we, we, you know, we, we can't buy our way into heaven. Remember Simon? When Simon, the Bible says Simon, he was a sorcerer. But when he saw them doing signs and wonders, amen, he got baptized and he became a believer. But then when he saw them, uh, uh, people receiving the Holy Ghost, he said, how can I buy that? He wanted to buy it and sell it. Like it was some kind of, like it was some kind of, you know, some, some uh, yeah, like it was some kind of magic trick or something. So we, we, we got to understand that if we want to be perfect, that we got to give up some things. A lot of times what we got to give up is us. Our, our thinking, our, our mindsets, amen, the things that we want to do, amen. That's why Jesus, when he said, he said, why, why you call me good? What, make, what, what makes you think I'm so good? If, 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 I, if I was so good, you would have been following me. If I was so good, you would have to ask me that question. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If I was, if I was so good, you would have to sneak around or you would have to come in my presence and ask me those, those questions. Amen? It's a lot of times because of who we associate with, a lot of times we don't have to ask those questions. Amen? Because if, if, if we knew the, the, uh, uh, the characteristics of God and, and the love of God and, and how much he loves us, a lot of stuff we don't even have to ask, do we? Because we, 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 we know what he, what, what, what he means to us, amen. We know what he does for us, amen. I know every moment when I wake up, I can't supply my own breath. So I know he loves me so much, and those are one of his characteristics, that he's a loving God, that he pumps up my lungs every morning, amen, and he causes them to inflate and deflate. His love does that. It, it, it ain't of me, amen. Let me give you this scripture right here. Ephesians 2 9. Ephesians 2 9. It said, God saved you by his grace when you believed. Amen. So when we have faith in God and who he is, 
That's when we are saved. Amen. We're rescued. Amen. We're no longer by ourselves. Ephesians 2 9. God saved you by his grace. Remember, I told you about grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. His blessing that he gives you that you could not earn, you didn't deserve it, and you can never repay it. But he gave it to you. It's like, it's like me uh, uh, got a, a Mercedes, uh, and I just give it to my daughter to drive, and she ain't got no driver's license. But when we, when we understand that by his grace, it, it is activated when we believe. And the Bible says this. He's telling in, in Ephesians, he's saying, don't, don't puff yourself up like you did this. Don't, don't, don't think like you, you, you did this on your own. He says, and you can't take credit for this. You can't take credit for saving yourself. You can't take credit for your mind change. You can't take credit for your heart change. It was all a part of grace. But it only happened when you believed. But I thank God that this, this young ruler, at least he, he didn't understand, but he came to him, amen. And I, I, I believe Jesus spoke this to him. He said, you can't take credit for this. He said, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Woo. See, the, the, the rich man thought he could, hey, I got all this money. I've been good to everybody. I got money. I can do whatever I want to do. What do I need to do to inherit what do I have to buy? Who I got to pay off? How do I get my name in the Lamb's Book of Life? How do I get my name in there? And right here it tells you, it is salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done. So let me, let me, let me bust y'all bubble. Let me bust anybody watching, anybody listening. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how much money you give away. Amen. You will never be able to buy your way into heaven. It is by grace it is by salvation that you get to heaven. Amen. And it, it's amazing how th th this rich ruler, if you apply to, to, to things that are going on now in the world, amen, we got more millionaires than they've ever had before. People are capitalizing off of the poor people. But the poor people are looking up to the rich people. And the poor people think the rich people got it going on. Oh, man, they got it made. They got that nice house. They got that nice car, everything. Those things are things that anybody can buy. But Jesus would tell him, he said, you know what? You got all of that stuff, but it don't mean nothing. You still cannot get into heaven. Your PhDs, your nice car, your fine clothes, all that stuff, you can never get into heaven. You cannot buy your way into heaven, amen. He says, it is a gift from God. He says, so, so none of us can boast about it. Amen. Because if, what he was saying is, if it's so easy for us to get it, if it was so easy to get into heaven, we'd boast about it. Man, you know what? Just bought me a ticket to heaven. Oh, man, come on now. Give him high five and everything. Because that's something you did. Amen. But if everybody could get into heaven, I wouldn't want to go there. Because if you can do it on your own, amen, it can't be all that. Amen. Look at earth down here. Look at all the stuff we're doing on our own. Look how messed up it is. It is so corrupt down here, amen. It's he who has the most money, he's the one to get all the spoils, amen. They idolize these rappers and these, these uh, uh, politicians and uh, all these, these CEOs and everything, talking about all the stuff they got, man. They just flash it before their eyes and everything, and we, we look at it, and we, we want it, and we want it, want it, and the more we want it, we get our eyes off of Jesus and everything, and we just, we just focus on the worldly stuff, and we forget all about the spiritual and the supernatural. We don't even focus on that anymore. And this rich ruler, he was one of those people, he focused on the things that he could do. The things that he could accomplish. But Ephesians 2, 9, he says this, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew. He said, in Christ, so we can do the good things, amen. And I, I ran out of paper. Somebody pull that up, Ephesians 2. Uh, you got that, MK? Ephesians 2, 9. 
Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew. Amen. So we are God's, we are Christ's masterpiece. He has created us anew. He has made us new. Amen. And what did he say before? It's when we believed in him. Amen. When we got the knowledge of who he was. Amen. We are create, created anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things. Here we go, here we go. So we can do the good things. Amen. Not the stuff that the, the young ruler did, the rich man did, but the things what? He planned for us long ago. So that lets me know that God had a plan for me. But it was only after I got saved. It was revealed to me. Amen. When I believed the masterpiece. God said, you are a masterpiece. You are broken, battered, misused, talked about. Masterpiece. But you know what? He said, I still got a plan for you. Man, we should have shouted then. The world tells you, you're just like your daddy. You're just like your mama. You're wrong side of the track. You'll never be anything. But God says, I don't care what they say. I say you're a masterpiece. And once you believe in me, I'm going to release the plan that I had for you a long time ago. How many of us know that we don't, we don't see, when you build a house, the blueprints, it's only until you see the blueprints that you know what's being built. When, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we got the knowledge of who he was, he rolled out the blueprints. Then he starts showing us, see, here we go right here. Okay, you're going to be blessed right here. Okay, see, you, 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 see, you, you thought you weren't going to have no job. See, you, you're going to get this job right here. See, you, you, thought, you, you thought you didn't have enough, you thought because you dropped out of school and you, you didn't get an education. You know what? I'm going to make a way. You're going to go back in there. You know why? Because you're my masterpiece. Amen. Masterpiece means that you're valuable. You're wanted. Everybody can't, <laughs> everybody can't have you. You know, a lot of times when people have masterpiece, they don't display them. Amen. They put them in a secret place. He put him in a place where when he wants to look at you, he can look at you. He keeps you before his eyes. Amen. God, I thank you, Jesus. Mm. Anybody got anything to say before we move on? Rich means you got a lot of assets. We got a lot of stuff. Stuff ain't going to get us into heaven. Stuff ain't going to get us in heaven. All stuff we're going to do is cause us a lot of worry down here. And that's what he, and that's what he relayed to the, to, the, uh, to the rich ruler. He told him, he said, he said you've got to get rid of all that stuff. Because we, we, we'll, we'll have our mind so mixed up on stuff that we'll forget all about Jesus. Man, I can't wait till I get off, man. I got to go home. I'm going to polish my car. I'm gonna, you know, it's nice and warm there. I'm going to drive my car. And we forget all about the sermon. We forget all about the worship. We forget all about the prayer. We forget about all of that. Why? Because we're thinking about the stuff that we want to do. We forget all about him. Rich means you just got a lot of assets. But this, I like this right here. It's, the word young means having lived only a short period of time. So it, it was good that, that the rich ruler came to Jesus because he, he was young. He was tender. He was able to be taught. Amen. And that's where we are. We, we are young and we are tender. And we should, we, should able, we should be able to be taught, right? Okay, let, let me show y'all something right here. Look, look, look back in, at uh, the 19th chapter. Go back to the first, the first three verses that I didn't read. I started to read them, but I'm going to read them now. Verse 13. 14 and 15 of Matthew 19th chapter. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples scolded their parents for bothering him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their heads and blessed them before he left. So he said, well, Pastor, what, what, what's so significant about that? To come into the understanding of who God is, you got to become Christ-like. You got to become like a child. You got to become childlike. But God gave me two words. You can't be childish. 
you got to be child, you got to be childlike. Childish means you're immature and you've not grown up and you are foolish. You're right. You are foolish. But to be childlike, this, this, these are these are words for childlike. Uh, it means that you you have uh, you have good qualities that are associated with a child. Well, what are some good qualities that's associated with a child? You're curious. You don't mind asking questions. Mm. Uh, uh, you're wanting to explore. Amen. See, explore is different from being curious because when you explore, it means you want to look for something that you haven't seen before. Amen. So a lot of us, we're just curious and we just touch the surface. But when you explore, God, I want to go deeper in you, God, because there's something else in, in that scripture. Remember I told you, there's word and there's power embedded into the scriptures, but we just ain't pulled it out yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, childlike means that you have an imagination. Amen. What's an imagination? That you can call those things to be not as though they were. You don't have to see them, but just because you believe it, you got a childlike imagination, amen. Uh, uh, a childlike uh, uh, is being accepted by others, amen. It don't mean that you're going to do stuff to be accepted. It means that you, you, you want to be loved as you are. Mm. You ain't got to try to fit in like somebody else. Ain't that right, Minister Ford? You ain't got to try to be like somebody else. Oh, man, they get all the recognition. If I be like them, maybe they accept me, amen. But that ain't your character. That ain't who God created you to be. Jesus. Look, 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 at, look, look at David. David, Samuel came there to, to, to find a king. He came there to find a king. He knew the king was right there in that location. He came there to, to anoint a king over a nation. All the brothers lined up. Oh, yeah, he looked good. Yeah, he's strong. Oh, yeah, he looked real good. He muscular. Hey, but ain't none of them the one. But it wasn't until the smelly, nasty, stinky David came in and then the prophet Samuel said, that's the one right there. So we need to quit trying to fit in and dress ourselves up to look like everybody else. Stay nasty. Stay dirty. Stay stinky. That's what God's going to use you. Jesus. Uh, uh, childlike means that you give generously. Amen. My, my, my granddaughter, Nova, you, you say, give me some. She's going to give you some. She eats, whatever she eats, you say, give Pop Pop some. She's going to give you some. She gives generously. Childlike means you 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 know you're not stingy. We 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 know we know what we're supposed to give. We we know our tithes, we know our offering and everything. But God know my heart. Yeah, God know your heart. He says deceitful and it's wicked. <laughs> That's what the Bible said. I didn't say he said he said it's deceitful. God, you know my heart, God. You know I gotta get my hair done next week. You, you know, we, we make up all kinds of excuses, amen. But he said to inherit the kingdom of God or to have uh, everlasting life, we got to become childlike. Next thing, we got to have we got to have contentment in life. You know, children are just happy with whatever you give them. I, I thought about about three weeks ago, I was gonna preach this sermon. I thought about me and Deacon Larry. When I first met Dick, Deacon Larry. We was young. I was in the third grade. I guess he was whatever grade. He was. I guess well, I moved up with third grade. So you, he should have been in the first grade. Man, we was running around there around North Birmingham uh, uh, with with a broken mop handle. And a football helmet on. And we, we was riding motorcycle. We thought we were riding motorcycle. We was content with what we had. A childlike mentality concerning the kingdom of God, you content with whatever God gives you. You don't ask God, God, do it this way. God said, God said, my ways are not your ways. This is what you need. This is what you're asking for. But you can't handle what you're asking for. So I'm just going to give you what I think you need. So we, so childlike, we got to be content. Amen. Ooh, I feel that thing. Somebody need to be content. Amen. Be content with what you got. Amen. And the last thing is childlike. You have to be one that expresses love for others. I, I've whooped over grace. My, oh, Jesus. I spanked my grandbaby. It wasn't, it wasn't even 10 seconds. She came over hugging my leg. Pop, pop. She was hugging my leg, just little tears rolling down her eyes. But you know what? She still loved me. She still loved me because I disciplined her, but because that childlike love that she has. And that's what, that's what Jesus was trying to get the young ruler to understand. He said, you know, you, you can have all of this stuff, 
But if you don't really understand what I'm giving you, he said, you got to sell all you got. Sell it all. And who did he say give it to? Look who he said give it to. He said, I've obeyed all the commandments. He said, what else must I do? He said, I've done every, all, all of the worldly stuff I've done. Jesus told me, he said, I want you to, he said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions. All means everything. Everything that you accumulated. Everything that somebody's blessed you with. He said, I want you to sell it all. When you sell something, what happens? You get proceeds coming in, right? So he says, and give the money to the poor. See, he could have said, sell all your stuff. But see, God knows the heart. Oh, yeah, I can sell it. I sell it. Yeah, Lord, I sell it. I sell it. God said, but when you sell it, give the money away. Oh, God. But look what he says. He said, and you will have treasure in heaven. So God already gave him a promise. He said, you, you build up your treasures here on earth. The Bible tells us, don't build up treasures here on earth where moth and rust will destroy them. He said, build up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy. So he was trying to get to, to understand that he said, when you give, that's one of them childlike things. What I just discussed right there, when you're a childlike, you, you, give, you, you just give to anybody. You give it to them freely. You, you, you don't care who they are. You just, you just give it to them. Like, like, like my buddy Lil Said. Said, give me a hug every Sunday morning. He's going to make his way to me. Hey, Said, how you doing? And they can know he on my leg. That's my little buddy right there. That's that Christ-like love. Amen? I guarantee if I discipline, if I discipline Cedric, Next Sunday, he do the same thing. You know why? Because he remembered the love. Even though he got disciplined, he remembered the love. Ain't that right, Minister Ford? <laughs> he going to remember the love, amen? So we, we got to remember that God will not do anything to hurt us. Everything he does, it, he, he does it to benefit us, amen? But we got to be able to understand that we got to give all of us. When he said before, we, we are his masterpiece, but we didn't understand that we were a masterpiece until what? Until we believed in him. When we believed in who he was, then we found out he was, a, he was, a, we was his masterpiece. So now he says, he tells the ruler, he said, give everything you got, give it to the, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. So he says, you, you've been building up all this stuff here on earth. He said, but I'm telling you right now, you asked me about, he asked about eternal life, didn't he? He asked about eternal life, didn't he? Now Jesus is giving him an answer right here. You can never have eternal life holding on to this world. You can never have eternal life holding on to the things that you have accumulated yourself. These cars, these houses, the Bible said this stuff is fading. That's what the Bible said. This stuff is fading. You ever look at a pair of blue jeans? They're nice and blue. You bought them because they're nice and blue. Three years later, they faded. You don't remember how blue they were. He said the world is fading away and everything that's in it. He told, he told a young rich man, he said, he said, you've been storing up all this stuff. He said, but I'm trying to tell you something else. He said, you got an eternal home in heaven that'll never fade away. That'll never fade away. I'm going to speak to somebody tonight. You've been trying to hold on to this world because you think this world is concerned about you. The world's not concerned about you. The world is concerned about what it can get out of you. God is concerned about what he can put inside of you. You know, look at it like this. When you got saved, God took out of you what the world had deposited into you. We were stingy. We were selfish. We, we were rotten. Amen. We, 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 were just, we were no good, right? God reached inside of us and pulled all of that out of us. But he didn't leave us empty, did he? He couldn't leave us empty, amen? What he talked about, the, about, the, about the, when the devil, when the demon is, is, is uh, cast out, he goes around roaming, and that house is clean. But if he come back and ain't nothing in that house, he's going to try to occupy that house, isn't he? Ain't he? Right? So what he did was, when, when God took all that mess and that junk out of us, he filled us with his spirit, amen? So now we know right now that nothing can come inside of us, Amen? 
Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So all this stuff you get down here, you can't take it to, you can't take it to heaven with you. First of all, you can't even get in heaven with that junk. You got to allow God to reach inside of you, clean you out, and fill you with his precious gift, his spirit. That's what he, he, he wanted to get the ruler to understand. He said, he said, you trying to keep treasures on earth, but you got a treasure in heaven. But he didn't stop right there. He said, next thing you got to do is this. He said, you got to come follow me. Mm. See, that, that's, a, that's a lot of our problem right there. Uh, we believe that once we get saved, that's it. We come to church, we join the church, we raise our hands, right hand fellowship, pat you on the back, that's it. We gone. But there's so much more than that. That's another lesson that Jesus was trying to give the ruler, the, the rich man. He said, he said, you got to understand that when all this stuff fades away, when you ain't got nothing, I'm going to be there. The home that you have down here, it's going to fade away. But look at the word he uses. There's an eternal home in heaven. There's an eternal home in heaven. He said, all you got to do is follow me. But the young man heard this, and the Bible said he went away. Why did he go away? Why did he go away? He didn't want to detach himself from what was attached to him. A lot of times we don't want to detach ourselves away from what's been attached to us. We like the fame. We like the lights. We like the pat on the back. We like the nice house, all that stuff. All, all that stuff fade away. What do you have left? He that cometh to God must believe that he is a what? A rewarder. God said, you lose all this worldly stuff, I got a reward for you. It'll never fade away. It's eternal, which means forever. It means forever. Amen. I got anything to say. We almost finished. Almost finished. Give me a few more, few more minutes. Amen. He said, all that I have, I kept from my youth. I've done everything I need to do for my youth. A lot of times we've done stuff for my youth. Amen. And now we're grown and we messed up. Amen. Can we just be honest? Because we, we, we were taught wrong. We learned wrong. We believed wrong. Amen. Therefore, we, what? we did wrong. Amen. The Bible said we got to have the mind of Christ. Excuse me. We got to have the mind of Christ. Amen. So when we become believers, amen, our mind is no longer our mind. We should adopt a new mind. In other words, a new thinking. Amen. Because we can't think kingdom and still be in the world. And you can't be in the world and think kingdom. So there's got to be something different. So he, he was trying to give the, the, the rich young man, he was, he was young, he was, he, he, was, he, was, he, he, he was pliable, he was usable, he was teachable and everything, but the, but the rich man didn't want to give it up. The Bible says he walked away sad because what? Because he had so much stuff. So much stuff. Stuff. Stuff will keep you out of the kingdom. Stuff will keep you out of the kingdom. But look, look, look at this. We're almost finished here. Jesus loved him. Jesus loved him. Look, look over at Mark. I think Mark says it better. Mark, right next door. Mark, the uh, 10th chapter, verse 21. It said, Jesus looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Jesus didn't want this man to, to, to be lost. What, 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 what's, what's God's love? What, what, kind of, what, kind of love what, what kind of love does God have for us? What, what is it called? It's, a, it's called agape love. It's, it's that God type of love. It ain't like the world give it to you. See, this, this, this love we got here, this worldly love, they, they can turn it on, they can turn it off. Yeah, traditional. If you do good, it'll do good for you. But the Bible says God had compassion for him. 
Have compassion for him. God loved him so much. He said he had compassion for him. Genuine love for him. There's still one thing you must do. He said you got to go sell all your possession and come follow me. James 2.10. James 2.10. He thought that, he thought, you got to ask him, James 2.10. The young ruler thought that Jesus was going to add one more thing in there. He said, what must I do? What one more thing can I do to receive? For the person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as the person who has broken all the laws. He was letting him know that if I did add another law, if you, didn't, if you didn't follow all the other ones, you still, like you broke the first one, like you broke all of them, amen? In other words, he would tell him, say, you got to follow everything. Everything I give you, you got to follow. Because if we don't follow one, if we, if we just miss one law, one trend, they said, if, if, if we digress from just one of them, it's just like we broke all of them. God is not going to add any more commandments in there. Commandments have been set. They were set in stone and the people still broke them. God wants us to be usable. But he wants to get our minds changed. We got to have a mind change. We, 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 we can't keep doing what we've been doing. Amen. And, and expecting to get different results. Amen. Father, we just thank you for tonight, God. Change our mindsets, God. Don't let us be so attached to this world, God, that we miss the kingdom, God. God, don't let us be so sold out, God, for the things of this world, God, that you pass us by, God. God, let us see your glory, God. It's not about what we can do, God, but who we serve, God. God, you said he that come to you must believe that you are God. God, we come to you, God, believing that you are a rewarder, God. It's not the things that we do, God. It's not what we buy, God. It's not what we give, God. But it's who we receive, God. We receive you, God. We receive you tonight, God. Lord, there's somebody right now, God. They, the world has a, has a stranglehold on them, God. They, and they feel like they just can't get away, God. And they know that they need to get to you, God. I, I pray right now, God, that their hold, God, will be loose, God. The enemy, God, is loose. It's being loose right now in the name of Jesus, God. I send a the labor their way right now, God. To let them know right now that you can be saved right now. You can be healed, you can be delivered, and you can be set free. It's not by what you do, it's not your deeds. You can't be so good that you can inherit the kingdom of God, but you got to be sold out for him. It's all about him and not about you. What good deed must I do to have eternal life? Jesus told him, you got to give up everything everything and follow me. Give up everything and follow me. Father, we thank you tonight, God. If there's someone that's listening, God, and they've been led astray, God, or they're in a place, God, where they can't get loose, God. Lord, you are a savior, God. You are a friend that sticks closer than a brother, God. I ask right now, God, that you send your grace, God, to pick them up, God. Move them out of where they are, God. God, you said it was like feet on miry clay, God. Miry clay has no bottom, God. But they're struggling to stay afloat, God. They're, they're struggling to gain ground, God. But they got to give up this world, God. And your grace will reach and pick them up. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior tonight, tell the world to loose you and allow God to hold on to you. 
Repeat after me. Father, I thank you tonight, God, that you have come into my life, God. I give you all of me, God. God, I want to inherit eternal life, God. I don't want to receive it. I want to inherit it, God, because that means that I have a relationship, God. That means I have a bond, God. That means that I'm in the family, God. That means it's been willed to me, God. So, God, I want to inherit eternal life, God. And I'm willing to give up whatever I got to give up, God, to get closer to you, God. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, God, that you are Lord Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, I am saved. Father, we thank you right now, God, for somebody right now, God, that may not know you, God. But, God, they, they, they walked away, God. They walked away and they want to come back home, God. God, you open up the door, God. And you invite them back in, God. Lord, it's amazing, God. When we leave home, God, we, we know the arrangement of the furniture, God. We, we know what is what, God. So let them come back home, God, because, God, they, they know who you are, God. And they know what you can do, God. Welcome them back home, God. Thank you, God, for restoring them right now, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for you being a healer, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for not only eternal life, God. Oh, God, buddy, but for eternal healing, God. God, we thank you for supernatural healing, God. God, your word says divine healing, God, which means it comes from heaven, God. God, we speak right now, God, divine healing and divine health right now, God. Any of your people, God, that are going through, God, whatever their symptoms, God, whatever it is right now, God, you have healed them right now, God. You have healed them and delivered them, God, and set them free, God. They are no longer bound, God. They are free, God. And we'll be careful, God, to give you all the glory and all of the honor. And it's in your mighty name we pray. And all the believers said, amen, amen, amen. What does your faith look like? What does your faith look like? That's a good question. We need to keep that in our heart. What does our faith look like? We thank God for everybody that's been sowing into the kingdom of God by way of true love to live in church. Amen. We, we thank you for the, for the offerings. And we thank you for the tithes that you've been sending. We've been having people send tithes in and uh, they're not even members, God, but they see that there's uh, a work going on in the kingdom and true love to live as church. Amen. And we thank God that they know that we are a, a love centered church and they want to sow into the kingdom. Amen. So if you want to sow, if you can text the word give, G I V E, to 855 773 6297. Also, for your millennials, amen, if you want a cash app, amen, don't say you left your checkbook or your, you know, your debit card. We ain't got there yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to get a debit card machine, amen, so you won't have no excuses. <laughs> amen. So you can cash app, dollar sign love, TLDC, amen. We thank God for, for all the sowing, amen. And we know God gives seed to the sower, amen. Everyone had a chance to give? Father, we thank you tonight, God, because of your grace and your mercy, God, because of your love for us, God. God, because you loved us first, God, because you've shown us what love looks like, God. Lord, we want to inherit the kingdom of God. God, we want to feel the kingdom of God. We want to walk kingdom, God. We want to talk kingdom. We want to look kingdom, God. So we ask right now, God, that you, you do what you need to do in us, God, right now, God. Move, shift, rearrange, God, adjust, elevate, decrease, whatever you need to do, God. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor, God. Use this offering right now, God, to elevate your people, Jesus, right now, God. To elevate the kingdom right now, God. Elevate the community, God. And most of all, most of all God, to elevate your people. And God, we just thank you right now, God. And in your mighty name we pray, amen. 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 We thank God for everybody that came out tonight. Amen. We know the people are working and some are getting off late from work, but we just thank God for the kingdom. Amen. And we thank God for True Love Delivers Church being a, a church that is revealing transforma transformation by God's love. Amen. And we are a love-centered church. Amen. Amen. And I want you to remember that God loves you and we do too. Amen. Let's go before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you once again, God, because of your love and your mercy and your grace, God. 
we are not consumed, God. We thank you right now, God, that as we come tonight, God, to hear your word, God, we, we pray and we believe by faith, God, that a word was released in our spirit, man, God, that, that that'll take us higher and deeper all at the same time, God. Lord, we know right now, God, that we cannot buy our way into the kingdom, God. But, God, we know because of our inheritance, God, that we've inherited, God, the kingdom of God. We thank you, God, and it's by association, God. Your word says that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, God. So, God, we have a double portion, a double blessing, God, of the kingdom. So as we leave this place, but never from your presence, be ever watchful of us, God. Cover us in your blood and camp your angels around about us, and we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all of the honor. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.